Well, it's been a long time, 2015. So it's been eight years, really. It has been. It's been a long time and um, just enjoying the blessing of, of having my son as a result of working with you. Right. Now, uh, just so we make it clear, uh, this was actually your egg at age 42, right? That is correct. And uh, you went through some transfers where you didn't get pregnant, so that could have been very discouraging. It was. the the um, My uh, gynecologist, after having an ectopic pregnancy, recommended that I go through some testing. And so we did. And so from there, it, the decision was made to pursue fertility treatments. And the first place that I went, um, I, I'm not sure why that particular doctor was in the field that he was in because he really did not extend any compassion, any, it was as though he wasn't dealing with humans that have feelings. And so um, it, it was not a good experience, but we did have an unsuccessful transfer with that clinic and then we transferred to it and we went to that one initially because it was close to home um and then we ventured a little bit further to a different clinic that was a little bit further from home and thank goodness that doctor did have compassion but uh another unsuccessful transfer and then a friend of mine who had been through the ivf process she said you know have you ever thought about doing some research on advanced maternal age so I did, and that's how I found you online um, and started learning about the mini IVF process. And I'm pretty sure from the point that I contacted your office, uh, my husband and I were in for our initial consultation in less than 30 days. Fantastic, that's great. Because if we make you wait too long, then we're doing you a medical harm because uh, that makes you ready to get older and older, really. So we have to see you right away. Right. And so um, when we, you know, I, I was, I just really felt um, deep in my soul that, that I would definitely have a child using my own eggs. Um, and I had not been given a great deal of hope at other clinics, uh, but I just really felt like that that was the, the direction that my life would take. And so um, after we met with you, you know, obviously you explained that I was, you know, older, but we needed to harvest as many eggs as we could as quickly as we could and to gear up for the, you know, transfer at a later date after we harvested the eggs we could harvest. And so, um, we, of course, we did. So we ended up with four eggs and the initial transfer was not successful. Um, but the second one was, so, um, that resulted in my son and he will be seven years old in exactly five days. Wow. So tell me, well, first place is really cool because you had older eggs, you stuck with it despite many disappointments. And finally, uh, we had a bingo and, uh, this was a 42 year old eggs and you have a son. So let's hear something about him. Um, he is has a tender heart. He's very energetic. He's very intelligent. Um, my side of the family say that he looks like me and his dad's side of the family says that he looks like him. <laughs> we, of course, you know, that's kind of how it goes, I think. But uh, we were both toeheads as uh, young children. And so he is a toehead and he has blue eyes. Dad and I both have green. Um, I believe he's going to be tall like his father, who's six foot three. Um, so and he's very, um, very, very talkative, as am I, but he talks even more than I do. Um, <laughs> and so he's just, he brings so much joy to our life. And he's very adventurous, which, um, you know, keeps us active and going because, you know, I am now 50 and my husband's 51. And like I said, in, in five days, he's going to be seven. So he keeps us on our toes. That's for sure. What gave you that determination? You you went through first a clinic where the doctor was not kind or caring and just was a robot treating you like cattle. And then you went through another clinic you liked better, but there was no pregnancy. 
And finally, you did mini IVF with us so we'd get better quality eggs for a 42-year-old woman. And, and even with us, you had a failed transfer, but you kept going. Where, how did, how did, where did you get that determination? Well, honestly, um, I just call, kept holding on to um, scripture found in the Bible. And I just kept holding on to the promises that you find in there regarding the desires of your heart. And in the Bible, you know, there are, you know, women in the Bible that had babies at yeah. quite an age. And I just really felt that um, through that, that I had hope. I just needed somebody that was willing to be kind because I think that helps to reduce your stress level. And of course, all the doctors from the very beginning stated that your stress needs to be low to none. Well, that's hard if you have somebody really, really enforcing to you that your eggs are not an option. Yeah. So yeah. I needed somebody that was on board with my thinking in that they might be an option. They might not. But let's try. And that's what you gave me was, you know, I can't guarantee this because your eggs, the quality and quantity are low related to your age. So you were very honest with me. But you were willing to, because um, I had, I had said pretty quickly at the initial consultation that I had had other previous doctors suggest that, you know, we had good quality sperm. So in the event that we had a good egg, that I would definitely, you know, not have any problems and be able to have a baby. So um, I, I let it be known pretty early in our, our consultation with you that, I did understand that, but that was not the path I was interested in at the time. Wow. So I'm kind of uh, thrilled to hear you say that. So it was really uh, what kept you going aside from your uh, trust in God was that uh, you felt that we reduced your stress and you, you just knew we were honest about what the path is you had to take. So I'm really, really touched by that statement. Yes, that is correct. I just needed somebody that I felt like was on the same team that I was on. But yet, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty straightforward person and I appreciate transparency. And I felt like, you know, you did kind of tell me that, you know, the, the odds were not necessarily in my favor. But if that's the path I wanted, you supported that decision. And, you know, we would try that path. And if we need to discuss other options down the road, then we could do that. And so you didn't dismiss my desire and the path I was choosing, you listened and you were agreeable to try that path and go from there. Well, so I'm, it, it, my faith in God, it, it gave me hope that I had a doctor that was willing to seek those options. And if you have, you know, some faith in your doctor as well, that does a whole lot for your spirit and reduces your stress. And so the combination of, you know, ultimately my faith in God and then having the doctor that I felt like had some viable options, uh, I felt like just opened the door for the opportunity for the. Well, Paula, I'm really excited to hear that and that you share that with us. And it's a thrill to see you eight years later uh, with a seven-year-old. Uh, you know, often I don't get to uh, see the patients and get the follow-up on their, on their kids and to get this follow-up from you directly is really a thrill for me. And I'm sure you're an inspiration to so many people that are still on their journey to have a family. That's fantastic. Yeah. We try to be supportive and encouraging of others to not let somebody discourage their path, you know, that they need to advocate for their own care and their own wishes and desires and to find the person that can partner with them to work together to try, you know, to make that option happen. And if not, you know, then there's always other options if, if that fails. And I don't know if you heard the first part of my little uh, introduction tonight, but when you called, you didn't get a robot saying, we really care about your call. Uh, if you want to talk about insurance, press one. If you want to talk to renewing a, a prescription, press two, all the way up to pressing 10, and finally, it says, uh, so when you press whatever you want, 
It says, now we're going to put you on hold, but understand that your call is very important to us. And it's just a robot talking to you. And you have to listen to that terrible music and you're on hold for 10 minutes. And they keep coming back every minute saying, please realize that your call is very important to us, but you stay on hold. And then someone answers the phone that has no idea who you are or what you want. Uh, you didn't experience that. No, I did not. I worked with a lady and I'm not She's still with your office or not, but her name was Dusty. And no, no matter where my emotions were at, when I would call her, she was always very calming and very reassuring, which also helps in keeping the stress low. And um, we did uh, two retrievals with you. And the first one yielded only one egg and the second one three. But I was very nervous, obviously, with that first one because I had never been through this. So I did not know what to expect. And she called me on April 9th and I was, you know, of course nervous and I answered the phone and, and she gave me the good news that um, we did have an embryo that made it to freeze. And I was super excited about that. And I shared with her that she made a day or a date, I guess I should say that for me had been kind of a hard date because I lost my dad on April 9th oh. back in 1990. So she gave me good news on April 9th that he made it to freeze. And I told my husband, because of course you all send that picture in the mail. And I, I had that picture um, on the screensaver of my phone for until our son was, was born. And I told my husband, I said, we don't need to do another retrieval. And he says, but Dr. Silver said, we need to harvest as many as we can. And I said, honey, I said, I'm telling you, this is our baby and it's a boy. And, <laughs> And the, the, the reason why I know that that was him is because he had to be cultured on to a blastocyst. Uh -huh. So I have research to know, you know, approximately when the attachment process should happen. So when the first two were transferred, I knew that that wasn't him. That was not my picture. So when the next two were transferred, you know, one of them obviously was my picture and my boy. And um, the day after it was uh, July 30th of, of um 2015, the day after we were driving home, because we don't live in the St. Louis area, um, I told my husband, I said, we're having a baby. And he says, don't tell me that. Don't tell, I don't want to get excited. Don't tell me that. He said, why do you think that? He said, wait a minute. Why do you think that? And I said, because I have cramping and the baby is attaching. I, he said, I said, that's what that means. And he didn't do all the research like I did and stuff. And he didn't really want to hear that because he didn't want to get excited to just be let down because we had had the, the loss from the ectopic pregnancy. And um, then everybody, you know, I had belonged to a fertility group on Facebook and everybody was like, just test, just test, just test. And I said, no, I don't need to. I said, I'm going to wait until I'm supposed to go in and test because I already know I'm pregnant. So, And I didn't have any feelings in terms of sickness or anything like that other than that cramping. And so when I, in fact, when I went in to test at the, the doctor's office locally to me, I was in fact pregnant. Um, and, you know, I didn't end up with twins. So the other uh, embryo did not, you know, make it. Um, but I told my husband from that point that day, uh, I said, you know, we're, we're only having one. And he said, how do you know? And I said, honey, I just know we're having one and it's the boy I've always told you we're going to have. And so he didn't want to get excited about the son because he had a daughter. So he really, really prior to us being together, he had a daughter and he really, really wanted a son, you know, cause he already had a daughter and he did not want to get excited to be let down. And, um, so then, um, you know, fast forward to 2016 and I was 37 weeks and they decided to induce me early because my blood, blood pressure was, uh, skyrocketing to say the least. But, um, so he did decide to take his precious and sweet time, though, because he didn't join us until 55 hours and 15 minutes later. And we didn't, and incidentally, we did not choose to find out if we were having a boy or a girl. I, I begged and begged and begged my husband, please don't do that. I just I want this. This is my first only and last biological child. I want this to be, you know, just an amazing gift and surprise. And so the agreement was that instead of the doctor or the nurses announcing if we had a boy or a girl, they were going to let my husband do it. And right. so that was a very emotional moment that he got to experience. And I could see his face when he said that. And um, 
obviously he was beyond thrilled and um we have a healthy boy i I want people to know that yes there are risks in terms of down syndrome and various things when you're older um but if your heart that's what really is the desire of your heart i don't want people to feel discouraged to pursue your desire of your heart because my son is perfectly healthy i mean he's developmentally on track to be a tall slim handsome healthy intelligent kind and caring god-fearing young man and you know i know from talking to you and thousands of others my patients that as much as you have so many goals in life uh, to achieve the most important one because that's the next generation that's your that's your eternity is your offspring your child and you have that so and and i think you're a fantastic family i really really appreciate knowing you and being part of part of your family 